Hi right, guys, and here welcome back to the complete guide to Minecraft survival, and we are back here on the overworld back at our base after a couple of episodes away from here. Yes, the dragon fight, and then we raided the end. But that is all done now, and that is complete. Technically, we beat Minecraft, but the game hasn't even ended. There's plenty more we can do. In fact, in all fairness, what we've built around here is not a lot. I know my roof is on fire, I was shooting at a creeper, but that's all good. There's still a lot we can do around here. In fact, all we've done is a barn, a house, a skelly farm, enchanted setup. But we've done the nether and stuff like that as well. But there's so much more we can do going forward. And today we're going to make steps towards that. We are going to use an item called the loom. And that is because I want to make further changes to our map here. Now, a loom. We want to here. Here we are, two pieces of wood and two pieces of string. Easy enough to do. My chest is overflowing with mob drops. That is a mess. But then again, I'm running out of space in a lot of areas. It will have to address the storage situation in a short while. Okay, so let me make the loom. And there we go, that is it. The loom down just there. And this is the loom. And what does the loom do? Well, the loom allows you to make banners. So we can start off by making a, a plain colour banner with one stick, six wool, and banner. And then like we can do the same with different coloured wools. Put you there and then we'll do a black banner. And like so. And then you can come over to your loom, put your banner in. I bet we need some dye actually, but let's get some dyes. Um, so you can put your banner in to die in and then you get a range of patterns and these different patterns can be used if you select one of these patterns it shows you the output onto your loom and you can do this up six times to create different patterns so say for example we picked uh something like actually we'll do the strike first we pick it up we'll do it again we create a t so you, you can use this in any way or shape or form start creating different designs I like so forth but you can see the different changes what are happening on here and these go down here uh, no so however you sort of want to do it you can play around with it and come up with all sorts of variations there's some fading things bricks put a diamond in it and so forth like that so we'll just do that for the moment as an example and there we go we have ourselves a banner so that is the loom there is a slot down here and that is for a banner pattern and have i got right we can start off first with oxide daisy um paper let's get some paper and that are six banner patterns i believe we can do so if we put a oxide daisy and a piece of paper in there it creates a banner pattern which is a flower charge so there we have a flower charge pattern we can and just make another white banner so if we then put our banner in here our ink in here and put our flat pattern in here we put a default pattern on to the banner and once we use that that pattern will stay it doesn't get used up so if i click on that there we still have our pattern and we can keep that to one side and there are six patterns so we have here we have the flower pattern which was used with the oxide daisy there is a creeper pattern creeper charge pattern and you need a creeper skull for that there is a skull charge pattern and that is used with a wither skull flower which we've obviously got here there is one called a thing which is a moan thing which we use an enchanted golden apple for there's a globe one which you get by trading with the cartographer and there's one called snout which you can get from piglin bastions so i have one enchanted golden apple here Hopefully we will find more as we go forward, but uh, I've got a paper I have just so we can get, we can try and start gathering all of these up. What am I doing? I want to put it in here. So, and I also have in here a wither skeleton skull so we can put and then we get the banner pattern thing 
and then we can do the same with our wither skull i get the skull pattern so we've got three out of the six the other one we need a creeper head and to get a creeper skull to get that we need to get a charge creeper creeper to blow up a normal creeper uh some people try and do it later on in the series we need to find a cartographer to change trade with and we need to raid a piglin bastion for the other three and th these are the two art and to make a couple of banner patterns and i'll get some more black dye because it stands out a little bit easier for the school charge we'll make this one here and then the thing charge we'll make that one here let's get all our banner patterns we've done so far down on the floor the one that's the flower that's the thing and that is a skull but you can make these designs however you want i still have these charges here so I'll keep them somewhere safe and I'm running out of storage yet again. I'll keep these in here out of the way nice and safe. But there is also something else you can do with the banners and that is... So I've, gone, I've made some white banners. Pop these over here. I'm going to name these Village. So I've got three banners entitled Village. If I put a banner down in a location, uh, we should map them on here. That's this one here. The map's updated to show the buildings. If I then click on this banner here, it highlights that on the map it adds on a marker saying village. Click it again, it will remove it, which is good because I don't want a banner staying there. However, what we can now do take these banners. Oh, it's, once it's been used. It actually can't be stacked. I did not realize that. There we go. Learn something new every day. But we can take these banners around to the villagers we have found. Put this down. Flag it. Mark it. And then we can get a more detailed map highlighting locations on our world. So if we can make another compass. There's no rest down there. Rest down is downstairs. I've made two compasses. Have I got in here a cartography table i do still have one i have one there there they go Pop you down there i think we need to start tidying this place up a little bit now make two maps i want to get my first map of this area pop it into here i'm going to zoom this out as much as i can one two Three, four, that's it, that's the lot. And that is where we are at the top. We can have a default banner for home. We can click on here. We can now go west, have a look to that side. Maybe get a building up a detailed map of the world. And that is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to create a few more white banners. I'm going to make a map. And we've got at least fill this map in and maybe one to the north of it as well. We're going to fill those in. And we'll not fill the mint, start filling the mint. I'm going to mark out some of those villages we've got. Now we've got wings, it's a bit easier. And then we can start building up a map of the world as we go forward. And then now we have a more, have a more detailed map of the world. That'd be good for finding things, marking them off. And we can build it up over time as we go forward. So I'll take you with me. You, I can put, I'll put you over there for the moment. So you tidy it, I'll leave you guys there. Have I got any rockets? I have. And let us go and start filling in our map as we can now traverse the world a little bit better and quicker we can fly around try and get into the edges as well make sure i don't leave the gaps up there and we can come out here slowly a bit by bit over time and we'll fly around fill some more of the map in see what else we have got in our world and obviously by having a map of the world we can start putting these markers down on the map we cannot we won't lose as much Here we are, here's our first village. We'll come straight down in here. Take our banner out. Um, we'll stand our banner on the end here, like so. Click I'm up against it. And, and there we are. And you don't have to put a marker on it, on the banner. You can just leave it as a white banner. And as long as you know the colours, that's perfectly fine. Obviously, it does hide your marker at times. 
But when it's on the wall, it'll probably be easier for to see. Here's a village number two. Ban up there. Click on it, there we go. And by putting your maps like so, it gives you more incentive as well to go and explore with, with a more detailed map. What you've got, so we're able to fly over this jungle. I'm just going to fly on the edge of the jungle here just to sort of trim it off a bit. There's another broken portal down there. And there we go, we are back home. If you look on the map now, we fly west, we found our two villages. I followed the edge of the jungle down to the east side of it. And we've come straight back up and uncovered the flight over the mountain. But I can put a band down here just as a marker so I know where my base is. In fact, we will do that. We will use this bright red banner. That banner here. And we'll get a map. Click on that. We don't need to put even, even put a name on it. We just know that that red banner there is our home. We'll put it out of here for the moment. We need a proper place for it. But we can start growing this map to see exactly what is around it, what is beyond this jungle down below. And then as we can do with the four maps, because our sky farm is just over this side here as well. Over there, there's some motions. We'll just start extending this map out as we go forward and get an idea of how big our world is. Well, we know how big it is, it's infinite, but how far we've explored and where we haven't been. And the sun is going down, but think now what I'd also like to start doing is to start having an idea of what I want to do on this world going forward. So let me just sleep and then we'll have a little look at that. Okay, we're back outside. I'm on the mountain here. The house is just over the side there and I've just opened up on this map this plains here. And the idea is what I want to do now is start thinking going forward what I'm going to do in this world because this way needs a little bit of planning. So if we come back up top to here and not land on top, we have our portal there and then over here is the pathway we have going over. In fact, let me just see if I can put my rendition, render distance up a little bit more to see a little bit more come into it. So that path is going over to the skeleton farm. Exactly how we're going to lay out this world going forward because sometimes you have to just plan ahead to get an idea of what you want. Now, I thought I'd keep that portal there because it was nice to use an abandoned portal. However, I don't think it's going to be a good option. I would like that road, instead of going there, maybe to come in this way, out here, around here, and out to those plains. Because we could potentially build something out over here. Maybe some sort of town, or city, or some sort of kingdom. What we could have over here. If we bring that pathway across around here, come sort of down along here, bridge over, and it goes out into there. So that is my thinking for that. Then out of this side here, we can start building some farms. Because there's quite a lot of farms we can start building. Now. That was a bit of a jump, wasn't it? So, there's some farms over here we can start building, things like pumpkin and melon, another sugarcane farm for over here and the like. So we can start using this area here, and here we can maybe extend the farmland and just start filling it up and giving it a little bit more detail and decoration. That would then mean my portal will have to move, I'll have to relocate it in the nether. Um, and I'm not going to do that just now, but I want to start getting this, path, this main pathway in, across from there, all the way here, maybe not across that bit here and getting that place in here I also would like to as well at the pathway down here we're still missing a bridge here so that needs to be put in as well I'm going to use the same mix I've got here in this pathway which is primarily cobble with a little bit of andesite and stone and a few of these odd stair bricks what like we water like for puddles so I need to take some of this road up here in fact I'll probably just leave it there for the moment but basically I want to take this road across over here and then around that way and then put that in place. Things like this will get filled in. I'll pick up the clay first. 
uh, and then once that's in place then at least you know over here where I can start building some farms off the main road and that is basically how we're going to be planning it going forward so with that in mind I'm going to pop this map back on the wall we're going to initially get some netherrack just to mark out the path so let me just get that done right we've got a pathway marked out now rough idea so a little bit higher just follow it along this way we ran these fields here try to keep it as low as possible ran from the portal let myself down again or crash we go around from the portal down here and just like this here i might just put a little bridge in just then we can put something underneath it if we want to just start giving some height variation and out to here but we'll just put a bridge over there and then that allows us to think about how we want to go forward in the building of some sort of town over there in the future the portal will have to move and i'm not quite sure where to have it just yet and I'll, I'll address that at a later date but right now i need to start digging up and laying this road so that's going to take me a while to do so i'm going to crack on with that and i'll be back with you in a short while okay guys right i've got a road in place and that was a lot of digging filling block placing but the basic road is in place and this is that, that the start point for me it's once it's all dug out i go around randomly place it in a selection of cobble then come back and do some stone then put a few of these stairs in which i'm not filled with water yet in fact i don't have to fill them all in and then come back with andesite just to make sure you can run smoothly without jumping all the way through and what this now given is a defined path through here it goes around there it does cut that way slightly but this will come all this way around here and these areas can be real quick on these in a minute um that doesn't look quite right there does it and now it's things like this i'm just coming through and just basically going does this look right oh like you we just cover this nether right because we don't need it that's this was that from the portal previous um and then i'll just put a bit of dirt down here just to tear this down a little bit make it look a bit more so these little holes like this, I feel these in because they annoy me. Because <laughs> there's like. That's better. And then go up here, past the portal. You will just change you for a piece of cobble. And likewise, there. Nothing like that, I'm just tweaking. Little bridge over here. You're missing a block, we'll put you in there, and then this comes all the way to this bridge and over here, and then it comes all the way down. Ready to here, there's an enderman moving around with the glass block. Are you reorganizing things for me, sir? Oh, we stop here, and there will be a bridge over there at some point, but that's not tension for today. The tension was just to get this road down to there. I've now got a clear path potentially from here, and over there is where we're going to build our first city or base or whatever we're going to do our first main project will be over there we've now got a clear path going right the way through here and we're up here there we go and it's nice clear it's different widths to the side that there's a bit narrow um but that is okay it's not no wrong nothing wrong with narrowing in parts or wide in others i've still got that little bridge there to do i will about that in a minute but at the moment it's quite plain and flat but it is clearly marked out and this is now where you can start coming in and sort of putting some more detail in around your road so for example here this is where things are sort of splitting off we could maybe eventually have a signpost pointing to the name over there whatever we're going to call that place we could have a signpost pointing that way depending on what we call that place maybe one day i'll release this as a download and then it will signpost people around there likewise i wouldn't put a signpost there you can see it but here maybe we could um perhaps have a little pile of stones something like you know travelers might see uh let's just vary this up a little bit now and then we'll just um pop you in like that pop you and there and so like this um some stairs i do it my inventory is shocking uh, I'll pop you in like uh, pop you over there and then pop you, and you like that. 
got this little pile of stones here. Oh, that's a bit flat there, isn't it? There we go. Like a little waypoint, a little waypoint marker. We can put the signs on maybe on that down the line. And then we can also perhaps give it a little bit of light because, you know, you don't want it to be totally pitch black. And if you put that there, it might look a lot nicer than just leaving it empty. I might put one on that side. You got a way marker along the way. And don't be that big, it would be a lot smaller as well. Likewise, bushes are great for hedges. So you could, I did this sort of bit around the edge there. But if you just want to help outline, different heights, variation between the two. You know, leave gaps as well, you don't have to have them all close together. You don't have to go all the along the path as well, but it just it gives you a little bit of a marking out. Uh, we'll just try and take that back around a bit like that. And so forth, and I do have also some fences. Again, you're not looking at totally blocking out the entire road, but if you just little gaps like this, you can put these fences in as well, and it just shows a little bit of definition to the edge of your road. And also for something like this as well, if you wanted to add some light, you can just pop that on it. Or if you don't use lanterns for your main road, you might actually use a torch, but I've got no torches on me. I'll put a lantern back there, I think, just for the moment. That's not a lantern. That's the lantern. There we go. The road is now starting to have a little bit of definition around the edge of it, and it's no, that's totally fine. You don't have to do it everywhere because otherwise you can start going you know, a bit crazy with trying to fill the whole thing in. But you can even mix a, maybe some bushes and some of the fences together. Like so. Uh, what's what you like? That? Maybe it looks like the fences have been overgrown by a little bit of a hedge. And basically, this can be built over time. It's just going to come down to it if you want a little bit more in. Right here, we can just maybe take this up a bit as well. Again, you can hide maybe glowstone. I've also got this here, this big massive hole. At the moment, it doesn't do anything, but I'm going to need a place where I can get stone. Because I have to give it some more cobble for doing this now. I do have a temporary mine at the moment, which I do use, but now this is just comes down to here, and it, I think there's nothing much else down there. I think it's all been dug out. And if you've got, a, and if you need a place where you come to get stone from, you might as well. If you've got a feature like this you can use around your world. Uh, you might as well make use of the land around you rather than to get yourself a hole. Down the workbench, we can just maybe add a bit of a safety feature around here. I'll just maybe do much, but it's just enough. Maybe just do a couple more lanterns on top here, like so. Could even just maybe just. use of that one, that's one there. But anyway, it, it's buried off, it's blocked off. And that gives you a little bit more protection over here. So let me just do another. Like that. And then, you know, it's, it's slowly defining the pathway out a little bit more. We can go along the whole way and put them in as well. But you're going to have some breakings off. There are some paths going, you know. Say we put a building here with a farm. We need to get access to it. And then we can maybe decorate around that area a little bit more at that time. Okay, everything has been done now. I've gone through and tweaked all the way along this pathway. And put the extra bridge in. So I'll quick walk on the pathway now. First thing here, I've, under, I've sort of tied up this tunnel. So I've put some stairs and slabs on the, on the top. And broke up the floor as well. And cleaned up the walls and just gives it a bit more of a nicer feel going through here. Again, we're using the hedges and the fences just to mark out the path. This keeps it going around. A little tweaks here. Again, I don't know what's going to be going in this area here, if anything. I've not gone over the top because we've still got all the trees around here, which helps. 
do the decoration and then for this wall here rather than just have a bit of dirt I've put a stone wall in it like a retaining wall put some cracked stone in it as well as some stairs just make a lot of some holes in there stuck a lantern in there for some additional lighting and then back around here this is the next bridge again I took some lossy cobble in there because especially as it's down by the river put some of that as well onto the edge of the water as well and then likewise around here decorated down this side as well and then you notice the netherrack so if I take to the air now because I know I'm going forward this way I'm going to be building the, some farms and stuff out this side here I decided I'm going to then modify around here I actually got on the roof somewhere What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take out some of the hedgerow here to turn this into a large wheat farm. Maybe put a pathway going through one out that way, one over there. Likewise, there's a large field as well there. In fact, I might actually bring that field right the way around. Uh, I don't know yet. But that will basically give me two large fields or uh, this small one here as well. Could also actually maybe put one field over on that side as well going forward but it does sort of some sort of definition just make it like the distance of farmland that's going to be more the other uh, farms the automated farms and then we're doing a larger project out the back that way then as well but we're now starting to lay some plans out for this world going forward field there field there make them more bigger have a bit of a farm yard here farm area for the automated farms over there Back over that way, we're going to start building our first main settlement, and then obviously we've still got a spawn area to work with as well. But I'll start working some of this off camera in between the episodes. But today we have, in today's episode, we have looked at the loom, how to use the loom to make banners, and then we can use those banners to put designs on and also to put markers onto our maps to give them more detail and to keep track track of locations. And then we've done. Put a main road going across to where we're going to do our big first settlement. We're going to put some industrial farms. We're going to expand our farmland. And we just had up and decorated our roads just to give them, just so they're not as flat and make them a bit more varied and interesting. Guys, thank you for much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye bye.